So here's our kit at first glance. The key features of this kit are this oblong cut here and this oblong cut that's cut within a 180 gear. Um, everything else on this kit more or less is um, filler and us just trying to try out new concepts and ideas. Um, among those ideas and concepts are uh, the straight edge pieces. Hold up, let me get a piece of putty. These uh, straight edge pieces. That uh, I'll show you some cool designs you can do with those. Um, Aaron on the finalized version added these ovular cuts, which I've yet to experiment with. Um, we added, with the extra space, we added another 180 gear, and this one has a 120 uh, off center cut in the center. So if you have um, if you have the 120 gear set, it adds some extra versatility um, to, uh, to that kit. And here's a 120-80 cut. Here's an 80-54 cut. And then a 54 gear with some more ovular cuts, as well as some more straight edge cuts, which again, I'll show you some good things to do with that. <clears throat> Now, this cut here, the uh, the oblong cut with the 280 cuts, uh, with the two 180 cuts, um, I haven't done too much yet with this cut. I imagine you can do some uh, epitrochoid um, sort of designs with it. Um, and of course, you can use these 180 cuts for their own rings. Nothing wrong with that. Um, we'll put that aside. And then here's our 180 gear with a 136 oblong cut in the center. And uh, this oblong cut fits perfectly a 96 size gear or hoop, as you can see. This is a 96, 63. This is included with the kit, along with uh, a 63 cut with the ovular uh, penhole again. And what I imagine is kind of an ovular donut um, attachment. So we'll experiment with those again. I haven't played with the ovular uh, with the ovular penholes yet. And we have a 9672 ring that you can use within the oblong, um, the smaller oblong, and a 72 gear with more straight edge attachments for us to uh, do some straight edge designs. Again, I'll show you some of those. Okay, I'm gonna set up my board. So I'm going to showcase some of the um, main features of this kit and uh, how it works. You can see, um, if you can't see, we have a 210-180 hoop here, which is from the full page Wild Gear set. Um, this hoop is essential for the function of this kit as it fits right in to the oblong system. Now, it does so, so that we can either incrementally, like so, move this along laterally, or we can do these larger incremental changes. And we can do that along one plane, or along both, by moving both of these at the same increment. Fit snug within the hoop. 
is another oblong cut, which you will see a size 96 hoop or ring or gear will fit directly inside of. Um, with the kit, as you saw before, is a 9672 and a 9663. This is the 9680 that you find in the compact Wild Gears kit. Um, so you don't have to have the 9680 ring for this kit to function. Um, you do get these other two, um, but you do get more variety. Um, there's different prime factors amongst all of them, and uh, you can just do different, you know, designs. Three point, two point. Um, I'm going to be showcasing something with the 9672. A uh, simple 2 to 1 ratio with a 7236. And uh, show you what this kit can do. So, um, this kit's really great for the purpose of. Um, just getting quick sketch work down. Um, you can you can putty down your uh, oblong system. I, I putty my stuff down. I've seen other spirographers use um, magnets. Um, some use just weights. Um, I like using putty. Um, but you can just putty your system down, and because you can place this in different pl places um, you can do sketches and like get some ideas out without having to re-putty your ring over and over so that's what we're going to do right now um, I'm going to start over on my right here and just start showing you some uh, ideas and some things to get your head ticking so you can um, fit your ring in the 210-180. You can fit it in snug right at the 30 mark. Um, I wouldn't recommend fitting it any, uh, any further than that. It gets a bit too snug after that, and uh, it gets harder to move in and out of the gears. So start at the 30 tick with both of your uh, ends. There's actually tick marks that show you the uh, points of symmetry. So start at the 30 mark. I'm going to grab my 9672. And again, it's just too snug. If you fit it, if you fit it directly against the oblong cut, it's just too snug. So I'm going to have this lined up where uh, just one tick right of the 10 mark. This is my 36 gear. I'm setting it up at uh, 12 o'clock. I like starting at 12 o'clock. Um, I've seen other spirographers and other people um, started at six o'clock down here. And really, you can start it anywhere um, for uh, practice sake. I'm just going to show you 12 o'clock. So this is a simple 2 to 1 ratio, which means my gear is half the size of the circle I'm revolving within. Now, I'm going to take the 9672 and I'm going to move it one tick to the right one little tooth to the right I'm going to leave the bottom where it is and I'm going to repeat this all the way across until I reach the limit. And 
and I'm keeping the same starting point. If you notice, I'm keeping this 12 o'clock starting point. It's no longer at 12 o'clock. I'm actually displacing it, I'm rotating it laterally. We call this lateral rotation. Just keep this going. You see our repeating pattern is slowly rotating, but you notice it's moving more on top than it is down here. Down here it's just kind of slowly working its way up and to the right. You can see here it's a much wider span of movement. When we're done with this design, it'll look similar to, uh, I don't know, kind of like a wing, kind of like an airplane wing. It's a very aerodynamic shape. And this, uh, this whole concept is actually no different at all than the traditional spirograph rack system, where they give you two separate racks to uh, either pin down or putty down. And then you take their rings and you, uh, you do the same exact thing. This is actually not a new concept at all. Just new possibilities because of the way that it's set up. Now we have our racks already parallel indefinitely with precision and we can actually move one rack within another rack which is just mad I know I know it's just mad it's wild And you can do all of um, the wild gear wheel within wheel techniques within uh, within these racks, either this one or the bigger one. Um, I mean, the wild gears were already already had infinite possibilities, um, and this just I guess expanded the infinite. So we're almost reaching the edge of our oblong cut here. And if you see, we're still at that same starting point. This is 12 o'clock still. It's pretty much at like 2.30 or something right now. But, oh, that's actually as far as we can go. Or else we just start uh, working our way in with the teeth and that just is no good. So that's our finished design here. And uh, you'll get the same result if you move the bottom rack along and keep the top. It'll just be flipped of course. And you can move from left to right, you can move from right to left. It's all your choice. I'm going to move this over a little bit and uh, show you uh, some more stuff. Mm, maybe 
are just right there in the center again. Right there in the center again. All right, so I have a red pen now. Maybe it'll overlap that in a good way. In fact, I might not even touch it. Yeah, we won't even touch it. Okay, so keeping the same ratio, the same two to one. But this time, we're going to move both of them. We're going to show you what we call lateral translation when we move both of these at equal increments on both sides of the rack. This is what we refer to lateral translation. Each time I move the top one to the right, I move the bottom one to the right. And if I was moving, uh, if I was moving it to the left, I'd be doing the same motions, both of them at the same time. And again, I'm just keeping the same starting point. So we get we this get very tubular shape, as you can see. Um, and we can continue doing that. In fact, we can make sure you're in the same spot. We can uh, continue doing that and move pen hole down and create a uh, kind of a wave length effect. by moving it over, again, lateral translation, and moving a pen hole down each time. Now I'm at A3. I'm going to go to B3, and then to A4. We get kind of a, uh, honestly, it kind of looks like a Doppler effect, huh, to me. Kind of like a wavelength in motion. Uh, so let's move this over again. In fact, let's move it over. There's markings on the bottom so that you can make sure you're at the same, the same spot on both ends. It's in increments of five. So you can also have your gear facing um, vertically, like so. I'm going to move it over a little bit more just to keep it away. Um, so, you know, just the same as you would if it were horizontal. Again, you can start anywhere. It can be your starting point. Um, I'm choosing to go at 12 o'clock just because it's where I'm most comfortable right now and it's easiest to show you. So 
There's our uh, 2 to 1 ratio, an ellipse, and uh, we're going to do some lateral rotation and move our right side here one tooth down. And while, when we move one tooth down, we're actually going to move our gear. Our 36 gear, we're going to move it one tooth counterclockwise. And repeat. So this is an example of us changing our starting position after a lateral movement. Um, so in a way, this is kind of combining a linear and a radial sort of displacement to this shape. So we're approaching the end of this linear route. And that's the outcome, as you can see. So those are all some examples of things you can do with the smaller rack. Um, we still have some space we can use on here, so I'll show you one more. Again, I'm going to have my 96-72 hoop, 36 within the 72 cut. I'm going to get my red pen again so that we can... Uh, you know, distinguish ourselves amongst the blue. There we go. And we're gonna move um, this this side. Let's move let's move this side instead. And we're gonna um, move counterclockwise again. But this time, we're actually moving with our movement here instead of opposing. Last time, we were moving this way along the rack and this way along the gear. This time we'll actually be having um, accompanying movement, maybe we call it. So each time I move this one tooth down, I'll move our gear one tooth counterclockwise. And maybe at first this looks very similar to the last repetition, um, but I'm sure you'll see at the end how they differ. Uh, that's our lab. Oh, actually, I did something funny there, but so you can see, it's kind of like looking at something in 4D in the fourth dimension where you can see the path of this ellipse as it moves through space time. Pretty rad. So there's some examples of some stuff you can do with our smaller oblong cut. 
I'll move on to showing you some stuff we can do with the uh, larger cut now.